I don't know where the buzzing is coming from. I shut off the guitar amp. It might be coming from the keyboard amp. Thank you. Just find it and take it out. So I'm believing God that tonight the glory of God is going to be released on everyone that is in this house because this is the f this is a, a night where we open up and invited everybody to come and you showed up. And I want you to clap to Jesus for yourself. This is just the beginning of yet the best which is yet to come. And we are believing God for an incredible move of the Holy Spirit. Because God is doing something amazing in our midst and it's for his glory. Some of the things are opening up. Now those of you watching me by streaming, we love you. And the glory of God is going to come where you are in your house. It's going to touch you. And... Uh, I want to say something here. I missed seeing your face, and I'm so happy to see all of you. You look amazing. Let's clap to Jesus for that. So I'm living by faith. So I'm not a survivor. So I'm not a survivor. No, you're not a survivor. The Bible never says they just shall survive by faith. No, the Bible says they just shall live by faith. Say the just shall live by faith. Finally, you got it. Amen. Say the just. Now, don't be afraid to speak after me. I know they told you not to sing, but that's crazy. You know, we're going to sing because we're in the glory. Say the just shall live by faith. <laughs> Say the just shall live by faith. Love you, Say the just. Let me hear you one more time. The just shall live by faith. Say again one more time. Can you please interpret for? Look, look like a mic is not on. Say so the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Now turn with me to the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. Can you give another mic? Look like the mic is out of sync. Nehemiah chapter 1. The times we're living in. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Lift up your hands and say, I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive by the Holy Spirit I receive my blessing I receive my breakthrough in Jesus name the times we're living in are very very critical times and what I mean by that is that if you look at Nehemiah he had to build the wall now, I'm going to look, I'm going to, do you have a microphone? So, we're going to look at verse 5. Let's see what verse 5 says. Now, this is a very powerful scripture that we are turning to. Nehemiah chapter 1. I want you to follow me very closely. Go ahead. Matter of fact, read from verse 4. And it came to pass when I had these words that I sat down and wept and moaned seven days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. 
Let thine ear not be attentive unto thine eyes, and thine eyes open that thou mayst hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the, the commandments for now the statutes which thou commanded thy servant Moses. Now read from verse 4 to verse 6. Go ahead. Now, we understand that the significance of the temple which had been taken down, when you look at the scripture in verse 3, and it said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are from verse 2. And Hannah, one of the brethren, came and he and some men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant are left of the captivity there in the province uh, in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. There was no protection and they were in a state of a devastation and they were scattered. But to rebuild from the state of being scattered and destroyed, there had to be repentance. There had to be Repentance, because for them to repent so they can find the mercy of God to deliver them from their sin and their iniquity, it required them to step out of the place of fallen state. Do you have a mic? Read from your translation verse 6 and 7. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people, Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. Read verse 7. That's verse 7. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commandments, decrees, and regulation that you give us through your servant Moses. So, they identified that the sin that was there standing between them and the blessing of God was exposing them to captivity. When believers reject intimacy with God, they become captive to the traps of the enemy. Number two, because of lack of intimacy with God, there is lack of authority in many believers' lives. Because they lack intimacy, they lack authority. Very important for you to understand that God wants to relate to you from the place of intimacy. You have to be so intimate, passionate. So Nehemiah knew that for him to rebuild the wall and deal with the captivity and take the reproach away, he had to repent. Verse 8, please read. Remember, I beseech thee, read from your translation. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. Verse 9. 
But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. God wants to gather and bring the harvest in. It begins with the first of all, the prodigals. Those that have been scattered by the enemy. They used to have the fire of God. They used to be in the presence of God. They used to have intimacy with God. And they lost it. It's easy to fall. Maybe you're watching me. Maybe you're here. And you lost your passion. You lost your zeal for God. You lost your intimacy with God. And you don't know how to get it back. I got some news for you. Tonight, you can begin the journey of restoration. It begins with the repentance. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Can I return to you? Can I come back to you? You are the God of mercy and grace that will give me peace, that will give me deliverance, that will heal me. Even where it hurt emotionally. Nobody can bear a wounded soul. Many believers are offended. Many believers are hurt. Many believers are heartbroken. Because when the wall is taken down, there is no protection to the assault. When the walls are taken down, you can be taken to captivity. Activity, either poverty, either witchcraft, either sorcery, either manipulation, demonic attacks, whatsoever you're dealing with, it might have gained access through the door of offense. Maybe it accessed your, your heart through the iniquity in your father's house, maybe in your mother's house. There's a lot of iniquity. There's a lot of sin. You see, before we were conceived in our mother's womb, God knew us. But the Bible says you're born a sinner. But you see, you become a sinner at conception. You being conceived in sin doesn't stop God from knowing you. But because you have a free will, God allows you to grow so you can choose him. But you choose to give your life to Jesus. Also, you have to choose to stay in Christ. Nehemiah was not going to build a wall without repentance. And I'm beginning a series right now. Where are the walls? Where? Ah, there was. The Bible says, unless God builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless God builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Why is it that believers are inconsistent in their commitment to God? They toast back and forth with winds of false doctrine, false gods, false worship, false teachings. Are you aware that if Christ came back today, the biggest percentages of believers would be left behind because they have not fully dedicated themselves to Christ. You know, I wanted to read from your translation verse 8. With the love of God. Read verse 8 from your translation. Yeah. 
Reverse nine of Wow. You read verse 9? But if you turn and keep my commandments and do them, though they were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of heaven, yet will I gather them from hence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Sin gives the enemy access to scatter you to take from you what belongs to you. Not only that, but it gives the enemy access to even take down the walls. So when I say, where are the walls? I'm talking about the wall of protection. You need the protection of God. If the protection of God is not there, then the enemy can defile if the protection of God is not there, false doctrines can come in. Why is it that people give their life to Jesus and then they backslide? Why is it that they make a commitment to Christ and they're on fire for God? Then they go back and they begin to serve witchcraft spirits. They go back to do demonic activity. Because there are no walls. The walls are not there. Satanism has even crept into the church. Crypt in. It tries to creep in and make people compromise and do things that are contradictory. God is allowing some shakings to take place so that believers can get back to their face, cry out to God, repent, so God can have mercy on the land. The only people that can stand in a gap to intercede for a land. So the land is not destroyed. Is the church. If believers are defiled. And they lack the discernment to see. Then the land can be destroyed. Because they will not be able to stand. And hold the land in prayer. The enemy is not intimidated by how loud you sing. Is not even intimidated by how many family members you have. How much money you have in the bank. Whether you have a green card or a visa. You don't care. Whether you're a citizen. Whether you have a home. What scares the enemy is if God is on your side. What scares the enemy is not how much money you have in a bank. What scares the enemy is how you are dedicated to God and how you use the money he has given you for the kingdom. For a long time, churches have been focused on buildings. Ministers were focused on building their kingdom, their ministries. Focused on how much popularity they have on social media. Like I told you the other day, nowadays you can even buy likes. Because there are people that build a social media status. And, and then they sell those likes. They sell followers for Instagram. Somebody could be a stripper. Somebody could be uh, doing some kind of dubious stuff. And they have a lot of likes. So they sell them to you. And then boom, you, once they link them up to your, to your account, then it, it increases your traffic. So that's not, that, it doesn't mean you have legit followers. So then... You see, when you focus on the outward manifestation, but in the spiritual realm, you lack the wall of protection. There's a lot of churches that have thousands of members, 
But the devil doesn't even know their address. Because they don't bother him. But there are those believers that have intimacy with God. They may, not ha- they may not have a lot of something to show forth for it. But when they pray, there is an earthquake in the spiritual realm. When they pray, they cause a shift in the atmosphere. I want you to hear me today. God wants to deliver you from captivity. And he wants to erect a wall around you. It begins with the fear of God. God has given America, Canada, the United Kingdom, Italy, Germany, Africa, wherever you are, opportunity to reset, reconcile, to be restored back to God. What is it going to take to get this generation back on track? Our passion for God must be rekindled. God is looking for intimacy. God is looking for passion. God is looking for zeal. You know, the president of the United States announced that churches were free to gather and worship. Churches were released. He told the governors to allow churches to meet. Before the president issued that order, right here in America, some pastors were arrested and taken to jail for gathering to worship. Others were given citations. Others were given tickets in some states that people that attended those services, they'll give them a ticket and then they'll make sure that they they enter into quarantine for 14 days for going to worship. But yet liquor stores were left open and deemed essential. Abortion clinics were left open. You know what happens in abortion clinics? A woman goes to kill a baby in an abortion clinic. Yet even financed by the government. And they were deemed essential, so they were left open. Target, Walmart, and other Stores that sell food and stuff like that were left open. But yet churches were commanded to close. In America. So when the president said churches now should gather. Some pastors came out. Some. No. We don't think it is right. We have to wait until the medical professionals We'll reconsider that. What if they say church not open until next year? Let me do something here. When the church gets back to the altar, to the glory, it will earn the respect. That even politicians will consult with the church. What shall we do about the mess that has happened to our nation? But the government has more respect for medical professionals than the church. Because the church has proved to be scared, coward. But thank God because there are churches like this one and a few others. That have declared an open heaven over their land and territory that can pray hurricanes away, that can declare the glory to come on the land. We stood and prayed and said, Florida will not be New York. When they announced and said that Florida was going to be the next New York, I stood and I said, no! Can I hear 
amen to that. Where's my drummer? Find him. He needs to come work with me. Glory to God. I need my drummer. Go find him. Jesus Christ. I said, no. No. Florida will not be another New York. If you know what happened in New York, what happened in New York was very bad. They took semi-trucks and the semi-trucks were packed by hospitals. And in these hospitals, whenever people died, they slammed them into mass graves. And listen to this. One lady was being interviewed. She, is a, she works in the morgue. And she said that we are the last responders. The ambulance are the first responders. And then uh, the, the morgue is the last responders. And they were saying, you know, the, the hospitals just come and say, come, take your deceased. Take your deceased. Deceased. This. So people were just dying like chicken. And, and this lady was saying they took bodies, just slam, they, they would just go find the bodies, take them out of trucks. And if somebody's not claim their body, they just go toss in the mass grave. This happened in New York. People are you see, I know, I got some relatives that work as nurses in New York. My wife's auntie was telling her that even the doctor where she, she works died and others got infected, but she was never infected because she anointed her hands and her feet every day and prayed for herself and her family and God protected her. Can, can I hear me to that? You were protected by God because of the anointing and the glory. In our church, nobody died from the virus. Nobody got infected from the virus. Let us clap to Jesus for that. Samba, hallelujah. Can I remember that? It is because of the prayer and the power of God that we have experienced God's protection. So when they said Florida was going to be the next New York, I got family in New York, so I know. I had to send hand sanitizer and face masks to my family in New York because they could not find them in any store. Everything was gone. People died in New York like chicken. And they were saying Florida is going to be the next one. But I remember God said whatsoever we bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. I declared and said, no, Florida will not become a New York. Somebody say hallelujah. And we thank God because God did not let the state be hit like New York was hit. We give God glory for that. Come on, clap hands for Jesus for that. Applaud it. Now, when I say, shang when I get it, go like this. Shang when I get it. Did he say pray, create? Create? Let's go, create. No, no, no. Shang when I get it. Yes. Let me tell you something. Most of the retirees come to Florida, they buy property. They call them the snowbirds. They have property in the cold places and they have property in Florida. So, when they come here and they were coming from the north and this disease was attacking older people, but God did not allow this place to get destroyed. Because there are people that are standing in the gap to pray. Now, if you lost a family member and loved one, we pray for you that God will comfort you. It's the will of God for you to live and not to die. And maybe your area has been hit. I want to say that God is a merciful God. And he will save and bring peace to you. I received a prayer request from a family in New York. That were hit by the virus. They were infected. We prayed for them and God healed them. It's amazing that this wonderful sister, a partner, one of our partners in the ministry, contacted our ministry and said her sister had the virus, our brother-in-law had the virus, and her nephew had the virus. And I prayed a prayer of faith and God healed all of them. Come on, clap to Jesus for that. 
another sister called us from the United Kingdom. She submitted a prayer request. And we prayed for and the virus left her in the UK. Amen. We've been getting prayers from all over the world, different parts of the world. People want to be healed from the virus in Africa, in Nigeria, in New York City. Different areas. And God has healed the people. Supernaturally. I didn't have to go there to lay hands on them. No. I stayed right here. There's no distance in the spirit. And God did it. But I want to thank God because God protected this region from hurricane, from an outbreak. Now, people died from this in this area, but not at the level which they speculated. Let's clap to Jesus for that. Because they thought it was going to be like an epicenter, like a boom, where people are dropping like a thing. You know? No. And let me tell you something. It will not happen here. God forbid. We have to continue to pray and to wait on God because as I storm the heavens, when we gathered here on, on, during the Passover on Easter, when I went back to my place, God took me to, to the heavens. I was laying down in my bed and I was caught up in the spirit. God took me to the heavens and I was in this place. I could not see no one, only me was there. And as I stood there and I was wondering, where am I? I looked up. The heavens opened because you have to understand I came from this realm and entered into another realm and I could not see anybody. I saw the clouds and I could see a beautiful territory unoccupied in a supernatural realm. So then I look up, I see these beautiful clouds. Then, like you look at the ceiling. Then out of the beautiful clouds descended a, another cloud. It was a different color. So beautiful. And I could hear sounds. Then I saw the angels come out of this cloud as they sang and declared his majesty. And they were going to different parts. They were coming out of this cloud and they were being sent. Being sent to different corners of the earth. Let me hear those symbols, my brother. Hallelujah! Come on, shout! My help! Come from the Lord! When I prophesied here, God released his angels. We prayed for the wind. The wind represents the Holy Spirit being released from the heavens. The glory of God being released. The wind being released. And we began to hear numbers dropping even in New York. Listen to this. COVID-19, it's time is over. Come on, shout yet. Yeah. Shout glory! Let me know symbols, brother. Thank you. I prophesy COVID-19, your time is over. I, 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 I say amen. Amen. Jesus will be glorified. Listen to this. God allowed this to come so the church can wake up. I told you when I saw the virus enter into a place in the spirit as I was praying, it kept on changing position, changing. It will change strategy. And that's why now they're saying in New York that all oh, people who stayed home, 66% of them got infected. And they think it's coming from the sewer. So, it keeps changing strategy, but we declare that it's not going to continue to torment the land. We declare that now the land is opening up to cry to God. If the president can send in land needs prayer. Now, let's forget about politics because God will use anybody. I'm not here to campaign for him. I'm here to say that the fear factor is gone. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Say, I refuse to be afraid. 
me tell you something again. If this virus hit Africa the way it hit America, they will die like a hundred million people. Because if you have one ventilator for a million people, what is it going to do? Haiti has about 50 ventilators. What's the population for Haiti? Is it about 8 million? Who knows the population of Haiti? Somebody tell me. 8 million? I think it's 8 million. Imagine that. About 50 ventilators. And you, some of those, maybe they don't even work. Uh, so in Ecuador, the bodies were being put in paper caskets. Cardboard. 11.12 million in Haiti. You can't tell me that 50 to 60 ventilators can handle a crowd for 12 million people. In Haiti. No way. America has the best technology, sophisticated technology. And this thing has claimed over 90,000 people. But it's God's mercy because they would have died a million. Let's clap just for that because God has reduced the impact of the thing. When the walls in the spirit are taken down, there is no protection. And what the president did is not something he did out of his strength. The Spirit of God quickened him to do it. Because there is a group of people that wanted to keep churches from gathering. So the enemy can continue to push the fear factor. But when the churches gather to pray and worship, something happens. I say something happens. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. As a Pentecost. I want you to come to church next Sunday. We, we, have, we, have, we have a right to meet. Get out of your hiding place. And come, let's gather together. And declare prophetically a spiritual awakening. I want to bring a bottle of oil. I'm going to pray over that oil. And you're going to go and note your house. Someone say amen. And declare there will be no death over your house. Say hallelujah. The Bible says a thousand shall fall at thy side. Ten thousand on the other side. It shall not come nigh thee. Believers should not be afraid. Be wise. You should do the hygiene thing. But don't be afraid. Now some people say, well, I don't want to go to church because I don't know. But hey, you go to Walmart, isn't that right? You go to Dollar Tree. You go to Barlington, they had a discount now. People are fighting at Barlington to get a deals. So when you, got, when you come in God's house, you're going to get the best deal. The blood of Jesus is the best deal. You that came here tonight, you got a lot of faith. We love you. And if you're watching me, you got faith too. Listen to this. God showed me I shared this in the morning. I'm going to share it right now. I wanted to read verse 10 quickly before I share this. Verse 10 and 11 quickly. The people Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 10 and 11. The people you rescue by your great power and strong hand are your servants. Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you, please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. Put it in his heart to be kind to me. What happened to those kind of prayers that the king will be kind? God can touch the heart of kings. God can touch the 
heart of your boss. Some of you lost your job. When they open up their company, your name is going to be the first they're going to call. You heard me? You heard me? You utande, utande? Yeah, they're going to call you. You're going to get back to your job. You're going to get hired. You're going to pay your rent. You're going to pay your mortgage. God is going to touch your king. God is going to touch your manager. God is going to touch your boss. God is going to touch. He's going to awaken them. So they can. You see, it's God who can touch the king and open up things for you that were closed. You hear me? God will touch the king's heart. When the walls are rebuilt. It begins with the Lord giving you favor. The case you are dealing with is closed. Somebody said, I believe and I receive it. I said, the case is dismissed. The favor of God is upon you. Everybody said, I receive it now. Say, I receive it. Say with authority. I receive it. I prophesied now. I told you that the, the, the COVID-19, it's over for that now. People should fear the Lord, not the virus. God is beginning to restore you. To restore you. To bring back your, you from captivity. That witch that has been sitting on your blessing. Their time is over. The witch will run. Someone say amen. The demons have been attacking you in your dream. I sanction them now. And I command them to die. Every demon and every witch and wizard that has been cursing you. The fire of God will consume. May the Lord make their way dark and slippery. Some of your nation has been on lockdown. It's about one lock. I see nations shortening the lockdown and opening up for you. In the name of Jesus. There is a shift that is coming your way right now. It's about to happen. Your nation is about to get back to God. Things are about to come out of the... You, you are in a transition for something bigger and something better is about to come to you. So I receive it. So I receive it. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. I say America is about to experience the awakening. Families are about to be restored. People are going to be hungry for God. They are tired of religion. People want intimacy with God. You will not settle in your sin. You won't be comfortable in rebellion. God is going to convict you. He will wake you up in the night to pray. To cry out to him. Deep calls unto deep. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness to tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. I want to say I'm not afraid seven times. Say, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm not afraid. Come on, say it seven times. I'm not afraid. Why are you declaring that? Because you want the devil to back off you. That devil is a liar. Whatsoever is stole from you, you're taking it back. Take your money back. Take your job back. Take your peace back. Take your business back. Say, I receive it. Take your seriousness to God back. Take your zeal back. Take your passion back. It's time for you to believe it. If when believers are scared, what will the pagans do? Do you know in China, they control the people in such a wicked way that people don't even know whether they can be able to really do anything without being surveilled. Thank God they live in America. Where there is freedom of worship, we gather to worship today. This is for a season. And yet understand, all trials and battles you're facing are temporarily. The victory God has written it, it's established. Withdraw it and keep it. I want to finish by saying this. 
The reason why most of you never get to keep your breakthroughs and your blessings is because you have no wall. So you receive it and the enemy just comes and picks it and takes it. But if you get the wall back, if the wall is, re is erected, it's established, the enemy will not steal from you anymore. Say, so I take my wall back. Say one more time. I take my wall back. I activate the wall. I have the wall of protection. No harm will come upon me. The mighty hand of God protects me. In Jesus' name. Now, do you take your right hand, put it on your forehead, and say, I superimpose over myself the mind of Christ. Let the mind of Christ supersede my mind. I have the mind of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bow your heads. If you don't know Jesus in your heart, you're back sitting, you lost your passion for God. You want to get it back. Eyes closed. I'm going to lead you to Christ. Say these words after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I repent and I renounce my sin. Remove my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I accept in my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for moving my name from the book of death. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. I am born again in Jesus' name. Let us give all the clap offering. Have you been blessed by the word? Have you been blessed by the word? If you've been blessed, say, I am blessed. We're going to receive our offering right now. Thank you, Jesus. Prepare your offering right now. Prepare to give to God. Amen. For those of you writing a check, write to Power Evangelism Ministries. I'll ask Pastor Brown to come help me take the offering. Thank you. You see, God loves a cheerful giver. So exercise your faith. Hallelujah, church. Does it feel good to be back in the house of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, giving is an opportunity for you to bless God and him to bless you. Amen. Guess what Isaac did in a time of famine? Amen. He gave a hundredfold. Amen. What happened to the widow when the prophet came, Elijah? Apostle Sally is a prophet of God and an apostle as well. So when he comes to minister, he's carrying something prophetically. Amen. So when the widow, she had enough to feed her child and die. Amen. We know 36 million people have lost their job. My brother-in-law was making eighty to hundred thousand dollars a year job. Lost his job. But I told my sister, you know what the keto is. If you don't tithe and you don't give, you won't have a job. Prayed for them, told them to tithe, and now he finally got another job within two weeks. Amen? So tithing and giving is, is important. Amen? You can't buy a miracle. You can't buy favor. Amen? But when the, when the prophet came and he told the woman to feed him, she had a child. As a parent, many of you have children or niece or nephews or children yourself or grandchildren. You're going to protect a child over yourself, amen, because they're innocent. But it didn't make sense. Why should I feed the prophet first? Because he wasn't just a, he was carrying something from God, amen. He was carrying the anointing, amen. 
So the anointing can unlock prosperity and blessings over your life. So when you sow seed into this ministry, God will bless you. What the enemy wants to do is defile your heart, get you offended, get you mad, get you upset, not to give, amen? Attack your mind. Those are all the plans of the enemy so you can't support the work of God and obey the prophet, amen? Because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. So when you obey the word of God, what it says to give, like Isaac did, you shall prosper. Prosperity doesn't mean you have a billion dollars in your account. Prosperity means you obey the principles of God and you'll never lack. Because when this pandemic hit, I know people that lost 40. I know somebody had a million dollars, like millions of dollars in the stock market. And they lost 40% in their 401k. 40%. They didn't know what to do. You saw companies filing bankruptcy, getting bailouts. Hertz rental car today. They're 19 billion in debt, amen. What are they gonna do? Warren Buffett just sold all his shares of his airplane stocks to get cash. Why? Because of fear. But we as believers can't have fear, we have faith. And Isaac, when there was famine in the land, what did he do? He sowed. The only protection you have for your finances is to tithe and give and sow seed, amen? You can't depend on a job. God gave you a job because you're obedient and faithful. But when you tithe and give, you'll have a blessing. So I want to encourage you tonight, don't be afraid. Sow seed like the widow did. And guess what happened to her? The prophet told her, you will never lack in your life again, and your, bell, your bear will run over, and you'll be talked about forever. She still remembered today in history because this Bible never gets old, amen. It is Jesus. And she never lacked. Her child never lacked. And she had more than enough, amen. And, and Isaac prospered. So did Joseph, amen. So God wants each one of you to prosper, amen. So I want to encourage you to tithe which is 10% of whatever you make or any increase you get. If you get a check, stimulus check, your t whatever, tithe off that, amen. But give, amen, and God will bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your time. We're going to ask the apostle to come pray for the offering, and he's going to minister to you. Thank you, apostle, for the time. God bless you. Amen. Just to add what he's saying, those of you who want to give by you're watching us online, there is a, uh, you can use the cash up information on the screen. Uh, you can give to the cash up. The information is on the screen. Or you can Zelle your donation. You can use the Zelle. You can also use the, um, you can use the text giving. Text giving is, the, is simple. You just text the amount you want to, you, you text the word give to that number. It will send you a link that you can enter your credit card information. And from there, you can be able to uh, access that uh, website, the, 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 tech, the, 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 the platform. So whatever amount you want to give, you just enter the amount anytime you want to give. And some of you, you're watching from overseas, you could use web to give or go to a website. You could use send web, you could use our website. And you donation will be received in Jesus name there are many ways you can give can I get an envelope please can I get a credit card form and an envelope thank you amen glory to Jesus and some of you want to call in you could call in and give we have somebody answering the prayer line and they can be able to process your donation through uh, calling and we're going to pray for the offering now can I get a pen too, please? Hold your offering in your hand as we pray. Father, we ask you to bless the seed. We ask you to bless the sower. We ask you to rebuke the devourer and cast them, cast them out of their finances. In the name of Jesus, let there be victory as your children release the offering. In Jesus' mighty name. Wherever they are, break the curse of luck that their need will be met by your supernatural hand. Those who have no jobs, give them. 
Those who lost the income, activate something for them. I pray the Lord, you, those businesses, those who have businesses were hit, that they will recover. Let your children know that you will never leave them, not forsake them. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, ashes, go ahead and receive the offering. As ashes are receiving the offering, I want to remind you that next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. So, we're going to have two services. We're going to have a service in the morning. We're going to have service in the night. So, during the services, uh, the morning service, uh, we'll let you know the location where it's going to be. We're working on that. But the night service is going to be here. So we're going to have it right here. We're going to start at exactly 7.30. And uh, so make plans to attend. Pentecost Sunday is going to be powerful. If you have not submitted your fast fruit, go ahead and do that. Because God is moving powerfully through this ministry. And it's a good time for you to bring your fast fruit before Pentecost. It will be an amazing thing for you to do. Amen. You have opportunity to release your faith and believe God to bless you. Because God wants to bless you. We are in revival. We are in revival. Amen. Say amen. So we are working on, our, on the, the first service. We're going to have it. I'll let you know. But right now, I'm about to release the anointing. Are you ready? <laughs> Rise up on your feet. Glory to Jesus. Lift your hands up and say, Father... This is the time that I've been waiting for. I need my miracle. I need.